Let's start off with uh, prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for you, for your Holy Spirit, for your, your Son who died for us. Help us to be like him. Thank you. Thank you for your Sabbath, that we can come and worship you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome to our new church. This, this is great. I like it. You know, kind of more cozy than uh, before. Anyway, um, we've had our prayer. We're going to have our song now, which is Holy, Holy, Holy. We need our choir director to come up. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Let's go ahead and go to our scripture reading, which is Revelation 21 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for bringing us together today. I thank you so much for guiding us to a new location. I pray that you would put your blessing upon this location and all of us. I pray that um, you would, that we would hear the things you want us to hear and see the things you want us to see. I praise you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given us this week and for bringing us together. In Jesus' name I pray. Today is going to be a different type of sermon. I'm going to tell you about my background growing up in a religious group and how it affected me as a child. First of all, um, my mother was a Seventh-day Adventist. My grandparents were Seventh-day Adventists, and their parents were Adventists. So we have four generations. and. My mother really wasn't a, I'd kind of call her today a backslider. I mean, she smoked, she drank beer, she gambled, she went uh, roller skating on Sabbath, uh, sneaking out. So uh, I grew up with a mom that really wasn't, can we say, a firm religious believer. She married my father. And he said I wasn't his. Now, he was a holy roller. His father had two churches, so he was raised in the holy roller, which is nowadays Assembly of God, Pentecostal. My mother, an Adventist. So I don't know how they got along real well, but it didn't last long. I'm not his. So they divorced. So my mother went to work and left me at home. Well, home was with all kinds of different people. I can remember the shanks. I can remember the burgers. I can remember uh, all different people, not my mother. When I was probably eight years old, I got to live with my mom. That was so neat. She had rented a house and it had different rooms in it and she'd rent the rooms out to gals and she went to work. I stayed home by myself. So I remember my red scooter. I was about eight years old and uh, enjoying the sidewalk. Across the street was Wiggly Piggly, the market. I wanted gum or candy. I went in and I took it. No one told me not to. It wasn't until my grandmother came to visit. And she said, Jay, where, where did you get that gum? I said, over there. We were in the store. And she, well, how, did you pay for it? Said, no. I always come in and take what I want. Well, <laughs> You have to pay for it. Oh, my goodness. So, okay. 
And I still remember the manager pointing his finger, don't you steal in here. Well, my mother decided to date a gentleman who was in uh, the family, as they say. He was an Italian. And I still remember this as him being a Catholic. Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, what are you doing? And I thought, wow, that's strange, you know. And then he used all kinds of other words, which I learned how to use. So growing up, finally we moved out of Michigan and we moved to California. I got to live with my grandmother. Now, grandma went to church every Sabbath. So I went to Sabbath school. And I learned all kinds of things, you know. Um, you can't go to heaven if you're a sinner. Oh, wow. So you, you got to be really good. Yep. You can't eat meat. You got to be a vegetarian. Oh. You can't own a bicycle. It's a sin. I remember that as a kid. And I had a bicycle. So, wow, I'm, I'm a sinner. I have a bicycle. Oh, and I have to be perfect. But you can't go to heaven. Oh. I was in second grade and I remember Mrs. White saying, He's as unfit for human consumption. I thought, wow, we eat a lot of cheese. Mom cooks meat. I'm not going to make it to heaven. And that grew on me as I got older. I'm not going to make it to heaven. Well, then why even try? Why try to be good? It, uh, it isn't easy. But, like my sermon, you can be a lazy Christian. You go to Sabbath school? Did you hand out any uh, bags of clothes? Anybody? No? Not this week? Oh, okay. Did you, uh, did you study your, your lesson? Oh, yeah, I'd raise my hand. I never studied it. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Good, good. That's good. Glad you studied. They'd ask questions. I didn't know what they were. Do you read your Bible? No. Didn't read my Bible. Well, that's good. That's good you read your Bible. I didn't. And so, as you get a little older, you think, well, what the heck is it worth trying, you know? If I want to take something or steal something, it's okay. I can remember Al, my stepdad. It's okay to steal, just don't get caught. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll remember that. Because he's my stepdad. He, he should know, you know. And, of course, the, the language that he used was definitely not Christian. I don't think it even was Catholic. Except the, you know, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, and Mamma Mia. <laughs> anyway, we moved to California. I started going to a Christian school. Now, I had gone to three times the first grade. They said, he's got problems. Uh, we're going to put him back in the... He's not going to, we're going to put him in kindergarten again. Well, when we moved to California, I was nine years old in first grade. And so I started listening to all these Sabbath school lessons, how to do this good, how to do that. And it bothered me I had the bike. That was a sin. Oh, wow. We went to the theater Sabbath morning. That was our church going. So, Apollone Cassidy, Roy Rogers. We didn't go to church. 
Well, my grandmother started saying, listen, we got to go to church. You got to go to church. You want to go to heaven? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So in the second grade, our teacher decided to take us to Glendale Adventist Hospital to tour, see what it was like to be in the hospital and work where people get sick and you help them. Oh. That's cool. Then we went to the White Memorial downtown Los Angeles. And they served us lunch. We got a nice big salad. And it was loaded with cheese. I looked at that and I said, aren't Adventists not supposed to eat cheese? Why are they feeding us cheese? Something's wrong. Don't worry about it, Jay. Don't worry about it. And as those things were going on, I started learning more, you know. Um, I always wondered, how could a minister, a man, know the exact time Jesus is going to come? Because they teach you the 2300-day prophecy. Jesus is going to come 1843. Oh, he didn't come. We got to go back and study. Oh, it's 1844, October the 22nd, Jay, at the midnight hour. Jesus was supposed to come and he didn't come. What a disappointment. Oh, he didn't come. What, what, what happened? Oh, he went into the most holy place. One of our ministers had a, a vision walking through a cornfield. And he saw that Jesus went into the most holy place. He didn't go and come to the earth. Wow. You know, getting into that right there. He didn't come in 1844. The Jehovah Witnesses said he came in 1919 and visited their prophets. Oh, then we have the uh, the Waco, Texas. He was an Adventist. He gets shot and everybody's burnt. But uh, little groups. 1950s, we had the shepherd's rod that left the Adventist church and went down to Texas because Jesus was going to come. A few years ago, we had Elder Kemping in California. Jesus is going to come 2011. No, it's, it's going to be 2012. And it bothered me so much at the time that how does this minister know or this preacher, that he's going to come October the 22nd. At the midnight hour, he's going to come. But Jesus doesn't know. The angels don't know. Only the Father knows. That's what the Bible says. Not some minister. That's what the Bible says. That impressed me. So the 2300 day was important to the Adventists. It was pushed down my throat. That's when Jesus went into the most holy. I said, oh, okay. What they don't tell you is in 1844, when he didn't come, 300 people afterwards were put in a mental institution. Two children died because they froze and got pneumonia and died the next day. But they don't mention that. They only mention that he went into the most holy. Uh, oh, okay. And as I uh, studied, and what brought me to this church, I retired just recently. I was 73 years old. Go to work, come home, eat, Go to bed, go to church on Sabbath, take your kids there, because that's the thing. 
I don't need to study. I've heard all those sermons. I've heard the, you know, remember John 3.16. We all remember those. They're kind of shoved down your throat. So, when I retired, I had time to study my Bible. And what brought me to this little church is Hebrews 10. When I read that, I said, there's something wrong. The Bible says he went into the most holy after he died. Not 1,844 years, October the 22nd. He went right after he died to his father and offered his blood for us. It tore me apart. I told Linda, my wife, I said, there's too much wrong. We got to find another church. But I know the commandment says, remember the Sabbath day. Adventists push that heavy. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And I thought, okay, we got to find another seventh day group. And Linda went on the internet and she found our group, which I am with you guys now. I love you so much, every one of you. We have a special message, and it's all Bible. There's no prophet telling you uh, what to do, what to eat, what not to. You know, the bicycle ones, it still bothers me. And that may sound strange, but here I had this beautiful bike, and I'm a sinner. And I said, well, if I'm a sinner, I'm never going to go to heaven. I eat meat. My mom feeds us chicken. Uh, and then as I started studying, I, I found out that because Jesus didn't come to the Adventist in 1844, that there were two groups then. They were split. There was the open door Seventh day Adventist, and there was the closed door Seventh day Adventist. Ellen White was a closed door. Probation was closed after 1844. You couldn't be saved. You could come to Jesus and beg, but you couldn't because probation was closed. On the other hand, if you were the open door, it was still open. And most Adventists go with the open door. We can still come to Jesus. Thank goodness they, they, they believe that. Can you imagine if they still said, oh, 1844, it's, probation's closed. All of us are dead. We're lost. You can't be saved. So that, that surprised me when I learned that. Ellen White. Don't have children. Do not have children. Said, what? I got kids. No, don't have children. The Lord has little to do with them. Oh my goodness. Something's still wrong. And as you grow older in the church, you find things that were said, and if you approach one of the elders, oh, Mrs. White goes in 1880 to a conference meeting. And she said, well, uh, these people over here, the worms are going to eat them and they'll be dead. But this group over here, they're going to heaven. They're going to see Jesus. 1880. So I went to my aunt, who was a Staunch believer, and she's Jay, Jay, Jay. You don't understand. Remember Nineveh? God changed his mind. He didn't kill them all. Well, that's what happened there. God changed his mind, and uh, don't worry about it. So, 
Can we say that Seventh-day Baptists were saved? Yes, we can. Ellen White, no, you cannot say you're saved. Another step, I'm going, something is really, really wrong. You know, in uh, Jeremiah 23, kind of describes the prophets. God tells us about false prophets. And the more I read that, the more I believe that she is a false prophet. So when I read that Hebrews 10 and Linda found this church, it was the first day of worship together. I thought, wow, guess what my first words were to Daryl, our minister? I said, Daryl, do you believe in the secret rapture? Because I was worried about that. My belief of the rapture is the second coming of Christ. It's not a secret rapture where no one knows and he's going to sneak in and, and whip half the people away and the other half are still standing there. So Daryl said, no, we, we don't believe in a secret rapture. Okay, we're joining. And then Linda got baptized. It was great. It was. It was a good, a good time. So I looked at what the Seventh-day Baptists believe, and I kindly, firmly said in my mind, they believe in the Bible, and strictly the Bible. They don't have prophets. They don't have all these weird things. And I thought, well, maybe I can be saved. I've always gone along as a lazy Christian. Didn't study my Bible. Yeah, I, I handed out stuff. I didn't. I was lying. Because I wanted to fit into the group. You know, I'm a good guy. And all along, I wasn't. And when I, I asked God to show us which one, and he showed us, first day, we come to the church and everybody is wonderful. All of you were wonderful. Good welcome. It was just, it was one of those things that touches your heart. And... I can see other Adventist kids that are my age, because they've changed a lot, that you weren't going to go to heaven if you sin. You have to be perfect as your father is perfect. Well, how are you going to do that? I can do all things through Jesus. Oh, well, when you, you do your first sin or you steal something and you're used to taking it from the grocery store, or you got your bicycle, or you're eating tons of cheese because you love it. Uh, it's so nice to be able to not worry about those things, because I know I can say, Jesus saved me. He saved all of us. And that Revelation 21.5, He's going to make us all new. Every one of us, we won't have or knee. We won't have gray hair. We're going to be beautiful and young, and we're going to be with Jesus, our Savior. It's going to be great. I just love it. That's my background, and I'm so thankful to be here with you guys and worship with you. And it's just, uh, I, I can tell you, I can't tell you how relieved you feel when you know the truth 
And then you start studying and you learn more and more and more. And it's just, uh, it's a good, good feeling. And I can't wait till Jesus comes to take us home. Shall we have our last song now? A mighty fortress is our God. Don't forget we're going to have a potluck. So we got to set up the table and enjoy the company and the food. It's going to be great. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes. Sometimes through life, we, we're just traveling and we don't realize what's going on. But through your Holy Spirit, we see things we didn't see before. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts. We ask all these things in your precious Son's name. Amen.